Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today we're continuing our bridge over the stream scene. This is where we're hoping to get up to today. So we're going to do the grass, we're going to do a few details, maybe a tiny few rocks here and some daisy type things in our grass. And I'll be talking a bit about texture masks for your brushes and display modes when painting. So I think this is where we got up to last time. And we've got the base colours in and we've got a bit of variation, but now we need to start working on the details. So let's isolate the top again and we're going to work on the grass. So into edit mode, and actually you can go up here, but you can also press control tab and move across to edit mode. That's a bit quicker that way. Deselect all with alt A, and then go down to our object data and select our dirt. Then control I will select the inverse and back to texture paint mode. So control tab, texture paint. Remember that you need that button pressed up here to isolate the faces you've got selected. Back into our workspace tab, and we're ready for painting. Now one thing I did figure out since last time, notice our lighting changes with our HDRIs, and it's not really giving us a great visual idea of how our painting is going. And I found a fairly easy way to turn that off. With Node Wrangler installed, so Edit Preferences Add-ons, and just type Node at the top there, make sure you've got Node Wrangler ticked. You can do it without this, but it's a bit longer, and it's an add-on you should have ticked anyway. I'll close that down. Now in my shader editor, if I control shift click on my texture, that creates what's called a viewer node. I'll just show you that. And a viewer node is just a emission basically, but that gives us a much better representation of our texture. So it gives a much flatter, better representation of what this will look like in something like a game engine or if you export it. Now it seems a tiny bit overly green at the moment. So I'm just going to vary those strokes a bit. And to do this, I'm going to bring out this window and I'll push these ones back. And I'm going to create a new window over here. So I grab in that corner there. It is a little bit tricky. And then create two windows like this. You can also right click when you get that arrow and split area. And I'm going to change that to the texture tab. Now I want to create a new texture mask. The difference between a texture and a texture mask, the texture mask is like your brush head. So like Photoshop brushes. And you have a black and white image in there. The white bits will show, the black bits won't. And anything in between sort of gray areas will show slightly. As opposed to a texture where you can actually paint with a texture. I'll talk about that another time though. But don't get confused between the two. We're doing texture masks at the moment, which is basically your brush head. So once you've got that, press new. And that's created a texture. Now we can go over to here and we can find our brush mask texture. And you've got lots of options. If I click on image or movie, I've got all these options in here. The best one I would say is clouds. And now remember the white bits are going to show and the, and the black bits aren't. So if I brush now with a fairly brown color here and my strength is at 0.4, you can see if I zoom in a bit that it's creating a stippled effect like I'm using the end of a thick brush. So I can go across my grass and change the texture of it a bit, varying the colors. And can you see the effect it makes? Remember, this is with the texture mask, not the texture. Be careful not to make that mistake. Now, if I reduce the size of my brush, that will also reduce that texture as well. So it makes the texture smaller. I can also make the texture smaller here if I wanted more detail in there. Just for the sake of a bit of variation there. Remember to change around your colors regularly. Get a nice bit of variation in there. Okay, so suddenly my grass has a lot more feel and texture about it. Now, I'm just going to explain a tiny bit about this texture mask. If I come into here and I keep painting over the same place, don't do this to your painting. Now you'll see that it's tiled and I just keep going over the same spot and it will keep going in the same place. I'm going to undo those two. And I'm going to change it to random now, which I think is better and I'll paint once. And then when I go over it again, it's not just creating the same pattern here, it's randomizing it. So it creates a different pattern each time and therefore I get a thicker paint stroke as if I'm painting, I would say this is. So I'm going to undo those because I don't want that. But I prefer to keep it on random for that reason.
Now, if you're very happy with the positions of your rocks and bridge and everything like that, which you probably are at this point, then it's a good idea to add your own sort of ambient occlusion in. So where the objects meet, you add a bit of shading. There's two ways of doing this. One is with the multiply brush to make things darker. And I've still got my texture mask on and I'm at 0.4. And I can go around these objects, adding in a bit of shadow and shading. So this is one way of doing it. You have to be a tiny bit careful with this because the more you brush, the darker it gets and you can slowly but surely get towards black. And that's not always a good thing. So very delicately, you probably might want a strength that's lower than 0.4. I'm just doing that for time's sake in the tutorial. A bit around the dirt there. Now the other way of doing this is to actually choose a color. So you can sample the color around here, sampled color, choose that color and just make it darker and paint around it. That way you can only go to that level. You can't keep going darker and darker and darker. But it's much easier with the multiply brush. Oh, that was silly of me. I kept the multiply brush on and that didn't actually make any sense. So now I'm painting and it should only go to that level. There we go, that makes more sense. And I'm actually sort of painting over these areas. But the multiply brush is easier because here I've still got that color. So multiply brush will actually take the color and darken it. So it's a bit easier really, but you have to be careful. Can you see there? I just went a bit too dark, I would say. I'm going to undo that a few times and just be a bit careful. I'm going to turn the strength down a touch. That's why I have quite a low strength for my multiply brush and screen brush for that matter, is you can easily go too far with them. But they are amazing for creating that bit of depth. I'm going to go around the outside edge here as if it's underlapping slightly. Now, here's an interesting point. I've obviously painted from the top there and I've created a line because painting from the top just here, I couldn't paint around the side. I would say that's a bit of a limitation in the painting within Blender, but do watch out for that and you can tidy it up with the smear brush. Just smear it out a bit, but you do lose that texture when you're using the smear brush, so uh, be careful with it. And that's a bit better. So back to my texture draw brush. I'm just using the multiply brush now to darken a few areas up under the bridge. There we go, and it's got a fair bit more life to it now. The objects don't sit so awkwardly on top of the surface. Okay, so what I'm going to show you now is how you can add even more texture to your objects. I'm going to turn the texture mask off and that's a really common mistake by students is leaving these on and then thinking why is my brush not showing or occasionally people have a new texture and they forget about it it's completely black and I won't be able to paint at all because remember that white will paint black won't so a black texture will not paint at all as you can see here so if it's not coming out of your brush then just check your textures so I'll get rid of that you can get them back quite easily by clicking on the image and there's my texture and there's my other one that's just black. This time though, I'm going to use the stroke method down here. So stroke method is usually on space. I'm going to change it to dots. I'm going to turn the jitter right up and see what this looks like. I'll choose a nice light color so I can see it to start off with. And it's quite big at the moment, so it's the same size as my brush. So I'll just turn that down and I've still got multiply on, haven't I? I'm just going to turn that to mix, undo those strokes. They're a bit dark. And you can see what that does. So that's creating dots and they're jittered. The jitter amount, if I turn that down to zero, it'll go in a straight line. If I turn that up, it makes it jittered. <laughs> okay, but they're a bit big, so I'm going to turn that down again and make my brush nice and small. And can you see that nice texture that it's creating there? Don't go mad like this all over the place. Well, you could do, I suppose. But I think it's better because plants and grass sort of grows in waves and lines. So draw lines, I think, personally. 
I'm going to turn my brush up a little bit and the jitter up slightly. I'm going to give it even more brightness. And just randomly going across my grass. It's not too bad. Now I want my grass to catch the light on the edge of my island here. So I'm going to use the screen brush with my jittered brush and just go across the edge. That's too much jitter now. So I'm going to turn that down to one and just draw across the edge. So the light's coming down from the top and catching the light or catching the edge, sorry, of the grass like this. That's my thinking anyway. Worked last time I did this anyway. <laughs> so I'm treating this grass as if it's an object in itself and it's got curves and shape as if it's all a big mass. So it will catch the light on the corners like this. That's what I'm thinking. Well, that's what I'm trying to achieve. Sometimes you've got to experiment with these things and see how it goes, but I think it's working. Yeah, I think that's looking quite nice. Turn my brush down just a touch to go under the bridge. And that's working quite well, I think. Now you might want to have some sort of daisy type things so you can turn it really bright, white into the middle there as well. Let's turn the jitter up a bit more, 1.5 again. And you can do some daisy clumps. Strength up to about maybe 0.4 this time. So I'll undo those two. Mm, do they work? I'm not so sure. I'll put the strength up even higher to 0.6. I'm not sure that's quite working, but you can get the idea of what I'm trying to achieve. I might turn the jitter up even more to two. That's just about working. I don't know. Maybe it's not quite there, but I'm having a bit of fun anyway. I think actually that's just about working. I'm experimenting here a little bit. I'm sorry if I'm experimenting on you guys. Now there is a bit of stretching there. You've got to watch out for that uh, because I was doing it from this angle. And let's just paint. You can see it stretches across my surface. So watch out for that. It's very difficult to undo that at this point. And I will talk about layers in another session, but just watch out for those sort of things. I'm gonna try and go over it, hopefully. And maybe get away with it. I think I just about have. But the way to get around that is to use layers, and then you can delete the layer, the daisy layer, if you want to. It gets very complicated though, and it's quite hard work to set up. Hence why I'm doing it for another session. Okay, so I'm happy with the way my grass is looking. I think it's looking nice, but I want to work on this dirt a bit more. So I'm going to, shall we use the multiply, I think. Yep, we'll darken those edges around here. Oh, I've got my jitter brush on still. Let's see how that looks. Interesting. Oh, it's really light, that's why. Oh, that's not too bad, actually. I'm going to turn the jitter down to one. That's not too bad. And the strength down to about 0.2. And offer a bit of variation in the grass. Not the grass, the dirt, sorry. Mm, I'm not so sure that works so well. Easy way to get around that is to smudge it because I, I like some of the color. So I'm going to smudge some of that in. Yeah, I'm off, I've got a bit of variation of color now. I mean, I could have just press undo and then sorted it out from there. But I do like the variation. Happy accidents, of course. Uh, let's do that again over here. So we've got this sort of symmetry. Uh, so there we go. A bit of that jitter brush. And I'm gonna smear that in. You have to be a bit careful with the smear brush. It, it can just <laughs> smear everything and smudge everything and make it look horrendous. But it is pretty useful as well. Okay, now what I want to do, I'm going to turn the jitter off. So I was thinking to myself, why on earth is this still on space? But it's because I need to go to my draw brush. There we go, down to space and choose space, jitter off. 
Now, where the grass meets the dirt, I want a bit more darkness. So it's becoming more muddy. That's what I'm thinking. So I've got my brush light still. I think that's safe at this point. And that makes me able to sketch this sort of color on. Fairly small brush. Now I'm starting to go for a bit more detail. I can go a bit more tight, I suppose, with the brush. Okay, that's given it a bit more life. That's the same with the other side. I'm also varying my pressure a little bit or just going over the spaces several times to increase the effect. Now can you see it's created a separation now between my grass and my dirt and that's what I wanted. But don't just draw a line like that because, well, <laughs> it sort of works. But in my opinion, I'd rather build it up with a bit of variation. Happy accidents again. Look at that. If <laughs> if the reference of happy ap accidents is not making sense, uh, just look up some of Bob Ross's work. Uh, he's an amazing artist and a bit of a cult, uh, has a bit of a cult following. There we go, that's not bad. Let's get a bit of screen in there now. And just as if certain areas of the dirt are sort of catching the light. Kind of just having fun here. This is nice, isn't it? Just get to do this all day. It's lovely. Okay, that's working. It's probably a bit too dark around these edges, but I think I'm going to go with that. I might have to use the smear brush a touch. Do want to avoid using this too much as it can, like I say, be a bit naughty at times. Because it loses its texture when you use it too much. But I think that's probably a little bit better. It maybe had too much texture. There we go, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, so you might be happy at this point. I'm going to show you how you can add some tiny little rocks in here that will go with the stones that are already there. So we'll go way in, back to our draw brush and on multiply, which it already is. Nice dark brown color. In fact, I'll start, no, in fact, I'm not gonna start with multiply at all. I'm gonna start with mix. And a nice sort of mid gray for the rocks. Probably slightly sandy color, I'm thinking. So about there, turn my strength up, I think. 0.4. And this is going to be a simple rock. I'll have one in there as well. Maybe a tiny bit darker to create the surrounding edges. So a light color to start with and then these dark colors around the outside. Then we can go to our multiply brush Maybe the brush a bit smaller. Oh, it's very strong still, so I'll change that to 0.2. And just lightly sketch around it. I'm not trying to make it 3D, so I'm going all the way around as if from top view, that's the best way to do this. Because then you'll be able to see it from different sides and it won't look too odd. So thinking about some from top view. So it's sort of inserted into the ground. Hopefully that's sort of making sense. And the light again coming from the top. Okay, that's sort of working. And now if we get our screen brush. And give those rocks a bit of volume. I'm varying the colors very slightly as if the rocks got a bit of texture in different places, maybe picking up the light from different places. And at the moment that's too bright, so I've gone too far with my screen brush. That's okay. I can sample one of these colors around there, choose that color, and then just paint over it as needed. 
<laughs> and I've still got screens to send on. Undo that. I do try and keep my mistakes in because you might make the same mistake. I do that sort of thing all the time. Leaving it on screen is a classic for me. Now you might want just one little sharp bit so you can get the screen brush and then give it a real strong highlight as if it's got an edge down here or something. Maybe one there. See what that looks like. Maybe I'm going a bit too far again. I'm going to undo that a bit and just to there. It's not too bad. I think it needs a bit more colour. I think it needs a little bit less purple though. Because it's a bit purpley compared to here. So I'm going to sample this colour. I've probably already got it there actually. I've got this one. Yes, it's very similar. Make it just a touch darker. As if it's in the shadow of that. And paint over it. Oh, I've done it again, haven't I? There we go. Now it does make sense to use the colour around this object because if it is a bit shiny it will reflect the light but it also, even as dull as things are, they still reflect light. You'll be surprised how much the light around an object affects that object. Back to my multiplier to make it sit in there a little bit more. That's great. They're looking okay now. I'm just going to offer a bit more texture in here with the multiply brush. There we go, we've got a couple of little rocks. Now it does look a bit strange because these aren't painted, but I'm assuming to myself in my head that they're going to be the same colour as these. I might come back to this at that point and change those. Let's do one more rock the other side. I'm going to choose that colour that's from here, actually it was that one wasn't it, and then just go lighter and then maybe less saturated in here. Then I should match up the colours a bit better. Turn my multiply off of course. I must be tired today making all these mistakes. Just one little rock just here. Maybe this will be a bit bigger, out there. A bit darker now. A bit darker still, that's a bit too close to the dirt, there we go. Screen brush. Add a bit of a highlight. Multiply brush. And smaller just to give it some outline. So you can really see it, there we go, I think that's a bit better. Not so happy with that one. Alt middle click if you need to zoom in on an area, just as a reminder. It feels very purpley for some reason. I'm going to go more towards the greens, so it goes away from that purple colour. How's that looking? Let's move back a bit. It might be too big and therefore it should be an object in its own right. That's what you have to figure out in many ways is when do you need an extra object or when can you start painting these things on? I think it probably is a little bit big. I can use the smear brush. And just pull that in just a touch. It's not the best way of doing things, of course. As I always say about the smear brush, it can get you out of a fix, but it does lose all that quality. Let's go back in with my multiply brush now. Let's see, that's better, isn't it? Yeah, that's much better. Screen brush. Make it a bit brighter. There. Okay, so we've got a few rocks. Do please remember to save your texture at this point. And I think they're working, that's good. And we've got a bit more character and life to our grass. So in the next session, we'll concentrate on the base a bit more. And I think in sessions after that one, I'll start separating the objects out. So we'll talk about just painting wood in general, painting rocks in general, so I can break the tutorials up a bit. And I can also talk a bit about my new role as a freelance artist for Atlas Empires. And I'll put the link in the description so you can see a bit about that if you like. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope this helps.